Today we're reviewing the RG35X. Hey, what's up to everybody out there and hey to my CeeLo Pixel gamers. Today we're reviewing the RG35XX. If you're into handheld reviews, tech reviews, also video game documentaries, check out one of my other videos right after this one. So if you're into documentaries, definitely check out my Fruit Franchise's video game documentary. You'll really enjoy that one. All right, let's get into the review. One thing I particularly like about this portable console is the value that you get for what you pay for. You get a very sleek, nice package with a great screen, good color scheme as far as the buttons, nice layout, and a lot of good games packed in on the system. We're going to do an unboxing first, then talk about some of the technical aspects and specs of this system, and then we're going to check out some of its features towards the end of the video. And also, I'll give you my final thoughts on this portable console. Let's check out the unboxing first. One thing I can really appreciate about these companies is their attention to design. That's my original feel. And I just want to take a minute to admire the packaging and the presentation. Now, believe it or not, guys, this is very important. Check it out. They got the technical drawing of their device here. Model number RG35XX here with the Ambernick logo at the top. Very simple packaging all around, and uh, of course you see the Made in China there, and then you see whatever color it is. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy opened up. Alright, so, keeping that white theme, I'm feeling like I'm opening an old school Apple product. <laughs> Alright, let's take a look at what we got in the package. Wow, very clean. Okay, let me set this aside for a second. Here you have the actual device, the RG35XX or RG35X. Slide this up for a second. All right, so here you have your wipes, wet and dry. You have your instructions here. Let's go ahead and open up the pamphlet just to get a quick shot of what that's looking like. And on the back, it's in kanji. All right. So you got that. Also, it looks like another protective screen. Or you have your glass here. Yes, it is. And this just gives you instructions on how to place it on there. And the glass is smaller than the entire surface of the screen. So let's see what else we got in the package. Anything underneath? Nothing underneath. Let's see what's in here. I'm guessing this is whatever hookups they got included in the package here. I would get this thing open. Okay, there we go. I'm guessing this is probably a USB. Yeah, this is your USB-C cable. All right, so let's do another shot where we can see everything all together. Okay, so out of the box, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get your console. You're going to get your wipes with the glass protective screen. You're going to get your directions and you're going to get a USB-C cable. Just to talk about some of the technical aspects, this system comes in four different colors. The one you see here, a clear black, clear white, and also a Famicom color scheme version. With the RG35XX, you get a 3.5 inch IPS display which is the resolution of 640 by 480. One thing I really like that might be hard to see on camera is the quality of the screen. They really have a nice glass that they've included with the system and the resolution and visibility of the screen is awesome. For your processor, you get a quad-core ARM Cortex-A9. For your graphics processor unit, you're gonna get a quad-core Power VR. These are just a few of the specs for this portable console. But if you want to view more, go into the description of this video and you'll see product links. When you click on them, they'll take you to all the details that you want to know about this system. But I'll list some more on the screen right here. First, we're going to talk about the aesthetic cues. 
Now, essentially, I'm looking at this with a trained eye. As I said, uh, design was one of my careers, especially engineering and in graphics. So right away, you can really tell that if we look at the surface, it's got a thin bezel around the outside. It's really not flush with the edge of the uh, shell of itself, but if you look at it, they decided to go with like a flat face, not really a true round over or a deep round over, but you can tell that it's a very flat surface. It looks very clean. Um, let's go over here onto the left side of the console. They've kept it pretty bare here. One thing I noticed that uh, is really nice is they've added a dark gray to contrast with the light gray on the volume up down button. Now let's look at the back. In the back, if you can tell, they have four trigger buttons, your L1, R1, L2, R2 here. Right here, you'll see the Ambernick sticker with the model number, also other information on this device. It has a LiPo battery on the inside. Also, you have one, two, three, four, five, six hex screws, and I'd assume this is to access anything on the inside and also the battery, which where there is not a hatch in here. And keep in mind guys, certain cost saving measures, it's easier to design something without um, extra features. It takes less time, easier on the molds and it's cheaper. On this side, you have your power button. The R button, I'm not sure what it's for yet. Maybe we can look in the directions and see. You have your TF1 and TF2. One says INT, one says EXT. Here, we can obviously see that you can put two SD cards in that slot, and I really like that feature. Now on the bottom, you have your auxiliary jack out, and you have your USB-C in. Let's go back to the front of the console. One other thing I like to mention on the top section, you have your HD or HDMI out. This is a mini port, which will go out to a mini to HDMI. Also you have two dot light indicators here. So overall, it's a very slick looking console. I'm very satisfied with it. In the front, you can see everything is labeled except for the D-pad. And if you really look close into the D-pad, right here, you can notice that there are arrows here, not triangles, so that's pretty interesting. Over here they have it labeled for your X, Y, B and A button, select start and also menu. Just observing the colors here, you notice that they have the cranberry buttons right here. Now, I noticed they went with a darker gray on the outside, but really you could play around with these colors. Why not put cranberry on the sides and on the back? That would be a nice touch. Um, but I understand that with the initial buttons, it's probably cheaper and quicker to uh, consistently put the same color all the way around. Very cool. I noticed that when this console is being reviewed, they're automatically installing the Garlic OS. But I think it's important to see what you get straight out of the box and what is already offered on the console before the upgrade. So let's take a look into that. The first icon here is games. You have favorites. You have history. Search and settings. Okay. So let's go into the settings first and see what we have here. So there's many features here, including the battery. They also have an IO test, and I think we should go into that. Now this lets you know whether everything is functioning properly with the IO inputs. So just in case you haven't seen that before, that's exactly what this is. So in the menu it says hit start and select to exit out. You also have button sound. Let's go ahead and open that. You can turn that on or off. So you have background settings, language, and there's just a myriad of things that we will probably go over in the technical review. All right, let's check out the search section. And what's interesting is they include a uh, UI on-screen keyboard here so you can type in, say for example, uh, let's type in Sonic. And there you go, it lists all the Sonic games here and you can see there's a pretty decent list. Sonic Advance, Sonic Advance 2, 3, Sonic Pinball Party. 
and various games. So that feature works actually exceptionally well. Now in history, you can see the games that I played and I talked about this before. I really enjoyed Dark Arms Beast Buster and I'll just click into it just so you can see it. This is a Neo Geo Pocket Color game and this game is amazing so if you end up picking up the RG35X from Ambernate, definitely go into the Neo Geo Pocket Color section and play this game. You will not be disappointed. It is a sort of RPG slash uh, shooter and you get upgrades, level up and all sorts of stuff so Dark Arms is really enjoyable. This is actually the only game I've been playing on this system thus far. So definitely check this game out. Over in the favorites section, right now my favorite section is empty but here you can actually save certain games that you really like and they will be in this. And let's get straight to the nitty gritty and talk about some of the games. So included with the stock firmware you get PS1, you get Vertical Arcade, CPS Game, Neo Geo Game, FB Hack Game, MAME Game, GBA Game, NES Game, SNES Game, you also get your Sega Master System, Mega Drive Game, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, PC Engine, Neo Geo Pocket Color, definitely check that one out. Game Gear games, and this one also is very good, Wonder Swan game. All right, so these are the cores that come with the stock OS, and let's go ahead and get into testing out some of the games. Right away, I noticed that they kept it very simple, no background music, and just kind of um, made sure you knew and had a thumbnail to know what's what, which is really nice. Um, let's start off with some of the less common ones. I want to check out Wonder Swan Color. And here they have different Final Fantasies, Golden Axe. Hey, why not? Let's try some Dragon Ball. Let's see if I can turn the volume up. Nice volume. Okay, and obviously this is in either Japanese or Chinese and I can't read it, but hey guys, look at these graphics. I never honestly knew that Wonder Swan Color really had games this this great. I don't even know what I'm clicking, guys, but the game looks great. Alright, let's see. Alright. Okay, so this is more of an RPG style. Okay. Guys in the comment section below, if you could let me know if there is an English translation or patch for the uh, Dragon Ball game for Wonder Swan Color, because I think I would like to play that. Alright, let's try something else in Wonder Swan. Now, one thing I noticed is when you're looking at the thumbnails, after a little while, they just didn't include the uh, box art or thumbnails, but you can also add that. Uh, let's see. Let's try Guilty Gear. Guilty Gear Petite. So I imagine this is going to be like a chibi style. Okay. Okay, pretty good. Let's try something else. King of the Fighters. Let's see. Let's try King of the Fighters 2002. Alright, let's check the load time. Okay, not bad. It's, it's loading pretty good. But Neo Geo games always have this load screen, so you just got to give it a minute. Alright. And typically, for those of you who are not in the arcade generation, to start the game, you have to add coins because these were machines that, you know, were in game rooms and bars and stuff like that. So, you know, outside of Walmart, so they want to earn money. So they just select, add your coins, and then press start. All right. Let's see if 
they got my main characters. All right. Ah. Uh, well, I try. Let's try some other games. PS1 games. And from what I understand, guys, this system can run beyond what they've included cores with. So that would be interesting to see in a separate video. Let's see how it runs Symphony of the Night. Now, if you haven't played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you've been living under a rock. But let's go ahead and check it out. And if you're into like, uh, what do you call those? Like Metroidvania style, and you into leveling up and so sort of like RPG elements and storyline, play this game. So One thing that always confused me about the Castlevania game is they make the hearts, um, you know, like fuel for the weapons, and that always confused me. The hearts, I guess, could have been for life, but you, you know, don't belong it is. In this world. It was not by my hand that I'm once again given flesh. <laughs> it is. All right, I'm gonna get wrapped up into this game if I don't exit it now. So let's get out of here and try one more game on the PS1 side. Got Digimon. That's a pretty good one. Why not get into? Let's see what uh, Gran Turismo is talking about. Now I was gonna touch on Fighting Force. A lot of people don't know about that one. That's a good one too. Let's try arcade mode. We'll do a quick round here. Guys, what do you think so far? Y'all liking this console? I, I'm really liking it. We'll do it normal. Uh, why not Chevy? Do the grand sport. We'll do our automatic transmission. Through the mountains. I don't know if the triggers are going to be important in this layout, but we'll see. Can I get a do-over? Uh, 
Okay. Okay, what's interesting about this game here, I noticed they've mapped the uh, steering left and right with the L2 and R2. I think it would have been a little bit more comfortable to reverse it and put the camera switch on the uh, inside instead of the outside. But it still works. Now, I think if you go into the options, you can change the mapping to where the steering and driving is set to the trigger, if I'm not mistaken. Most early PS1 games gave you that option. Okay, why am I steering out? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Guys, I'm not sure why my controls are going wonky. It started spinning out for some reason. Alright, well, that should give you guys an idea of what's going on as far as the racing game. This system has a decently powerful architecture. So in order for you to upgrade your systems and add different cores than what already comes with it, you'll be able to do with this console. From what I've read, the performance of Dreamcast and also Nintendo 64 and Nintendo DS is fairly decent on this console. The thing I really like about the RG35XX is that you can actually play this on TV through the HDMI port at the top. Now, what this actually means is you can plug up your USB controller on the bottom and plug it up to the TV and then you and your family and friends can have a great time playing these great games. Let's check out the TV out feature of this console. Okay, what you're going to need is a way to hook up your RG35X to the TV. You're going to need a controller hooked up to the USB-C and a TV. Okay, I just wanted to show you my setup before we get into the TV display. I've got a USB-C adapter, and then I've got this controller, this iNex, basically black Super Nintendo controller, hooked up to it. Then I've got my HDMI mini hooked up to the TV. Right now it's in sleep mode, and as far as controllers are concerned, I don't recommend this setup because you would rather have the USB-C adapter that has the loose cord on it, that way you won't wear against the uh, port itself. So always have adapters and cords that have an extension and then plug into that. But this is what I had lying around. All right. So this is the stock firmware on big screen. All right, let's go ahead and get into the games. Why not? Crash Bandicoot 3. Now I notice there's not a lot of load time indicator. You'll get this black screen in between each part of the game. So don't worry about that. Just be patient, wait for it to load, and then the game will come through. Seems like all the uh, PlayStation games, especially Crash Bandicoot, each version plays a little different. Let me know, guys, what's your favorite uh, Crash Bandicoot version? Is it one, two, or three?
Are Silent Hill and Resident Evil games related? I know one is Capcom, one is Konami, but let me know. Uh, do they have the same writers or same game developers? slightly different but the environment kind of rotates with you time to go ahead and get to my final thoughts on this console you get a lot of great value for the price that you pay for it and it's packed with a lot of different features one I really like is the included two uh, SD card slots so that way you can upgrade or add extend the memory or change up between different systems that you wanted to use um, also in the back I like the fact of that they chose to use some colorization for their trigger buttons. Um, I also noticed that they're on the same level as far as um, height wise, so that would be a preferential thing. One thing I noticed is that it does bring off an aesthetic appeal and gives a nod to the original DMG Game Boy, but it doesn't overdo it. So that is a good aspect that Amronic decided to do with this console. So you get some of the good looks, but at the same time, it's not overdone. The perspective I'm gaining about this console is this is the one you get if you want to mod. There's so many custom buttons and accessories that you can get for this console. Also, there are custom firmware such as Garlic OS that can really open up this console to be something greater than what it already is. Well, CLO Pixel Gamers, what do you think about the video? I'm actually going to be doing a in-depth detail on the technical aspects of this system, the Mayu Mini, and many others. If you haven't seen my other handheld reviews, click on the link above and it will take you to some other handhelds that I review such as the Mayu Mini or the FC3000. Also, if you're into gaming history, check out my food franchise video game, Mini Documentary. If you would like to support the channel, there's merch such as this t-shirt that I have on. Also, there's many other gaming products on my CLO Learn Shop website. Just click on the link below, it'll take you to all the support links, definitely drop a like share the video out with a friend, and guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. Be on the lookout for my comparison video when I compare this console to the Mayu Mini 2 
Also, the in-depth review of each individual console. So, guys, I really appreciate you tuning in. See you on the next video, and you guys have a great weekend. Peace.